ideas or ways that you already are, are, are living out what I'm calling faithful discipleship of Jesus by opening resources and goods to all. What are some ideas that were discussed? Hold on, hold on. I want to hear from others. <laughs> that sounds familiar. Buying locally. Buying locally. Yeah. And in season, produce and, and uh, seeking out the vendors that, that, that provide us with local goods. So by supporting a local farmer, you're helping them stay on the land. Okay? The CSO. What other, what other ways that we can help ensure common access to goods? Yeah. So, uh, Clement is involved in Amos, and Amos has three rather active groups. One, creating jobs and getting people trained for the jobs and getting connected to it. Another one is on mental health, uh, trying to get, uh, or getting the people in the community, mental health leaders in the community together with consumers to discuss uh, problems, how to increase access, and how to uh, provide proper services. And also how, how to help to redesign the whole mental health system in the state. And then uh, the other one is on working towards restorative justice instead of punitive justice in the community. So jobs, it's big on everyone's political radar these days. We're hearing a lot about it. Uh, but churches ought to begin thinking about ways of helping to support job creation. What would that look like? Uh, my professor Doug Meeks always said, our churches are some of the most unemployed spaces in society. We don't put our baptized people to work. So how might we think creatively about nurturing livelihood even within our own communities? Yes? I think looking at it from the other end, one of the best ways to get there is to stop the wars. Mm -hmm. So that some of the monies can be used to actually serve the people as opposed yeah. to the trillions. So uh, the number I've heard recently, maybe you've heard a different number, but four trillion uh, since the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan began. Uh, imagine what those dollars could have done to promote schools, infrastructure, parks. Uh, that would be available and accessible to all. Now, I'd love to hear more, but I want to work through our other questions. So I'll, I'll give you time to continue discussing. The second question about the economy that I proposed was, how are the seats arranged? Well, the God who is triune arranges dinner guests as co-equal companions. Those who participate in Jesus' meal are mutual servants of one another. Here we need to recall Jesus' response to his disciples who are arguing over who will sit next to him in the Messianic banquet. And what he says is, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, but not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest and the leader like one who serves. This is the nature of God's own life. This is what the doctrine of the Trinity, one of the many mysteries that we take from this doctrine, that the one who is three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is a community of co-equals within God's own self. So to be faithful to the God who is triune means, first of all, criticizing any arrangement of the household in which power and wealth are consolidated in the hands of an elite few. Chapter 2 of Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt, is set in Camden, New Jersey. And in one section they describe New Jersey's most powerful political boss, or one of them, George E. Norcross III. Norcross is the prototype of the new political boss, the one who wears tailored suits, serves on bank boards, and runs insurance companies.
power arises from their vast wealth and the legalized bribery that permits the rich to buy the candidates and judges who serve corporate interests, while using their money to intimidate and destroy those who stand in the way. Politicians in state houses or Washington must assiduously placate these interests or endure the wrath of corporate masters. This is no petty corruption, lawyer Carl Meyer says. It is systematic. Its tentacles radiate from top to bottom. It reaches across all three branches of government, and it is bipartisan. The result of the political and corporate graft is a state and federal government controlled by the corporate elite. In our current economy, power and wealth are increasingly consolidating in the hands of fewer and fewer. But in God's economy, power is shared equally. All share and enjoy the goods of creation through cooperative relationships. So conforming ourselves today to the image and likeness of the triune God means working for a more egalitarian and democratic society. Perhaps beginning with overturning Supreme Court decisions like Citizen United, which have given more and more power to private corporations. It will mean working for other pro-democracy reforms to rein in the power of money to determine who wins elections and how they govern. On a smaller scale, Christians ought to be working to support the creation of more worker-owned, democratically governed business cooperatives, in which workers, managers, and administrators share profits equitably. We ought to be working at them, purchasing our products from them, and investing our savings in them. Why? Because the God who is triune, the one whom we worship, arranges the seats so that everyone at the table joins in mutual service of one another. So again, turn to your neighbors. What are you doing, or what might you do to promote a more egalitarian society? How might your congregation arrange seats of power more equitably? What can we do at the state and national levels? I'll give you a few minutes.